Hello, and welcome to this tutorial on Mix It Up commands. In this video, we'll be going through the basis of how commands and actions work within Mix It Up, as well as giving some very basic examples to get you off the ground and running. Before we go into commands and actions and details, let's take a step back and look at the different types of commands that can exist within Mix It Up. With the exception of a few rare specific versions, there are generally four type of commands currently. They are chat commands, which are labeled as commands in the video. These are ones that a person would type exclamation point and then a set of text in your chat to initiate. There are interactive commands, which are commands that are hooked into an interactive button or joystick that comes from Mixer's interactive game functionality. There are event commands, which are triggered when Mixer sends an event of something special that's happened on your channel. And there are timer commands, which are run at a periodic instance where one command runs, and then the delay happens, and then another command runs. And these are run automatically for you in your channel without you having to interact in any way. For this tutorial, we'll be specifically only looking at creating a chat command, but everything that we cover in this video works across the board for any type of command. That means whatever you see here, you can do the same thing in chat commands, interactive commands, event commands, and timer commands. First, let's go through what you can expect to see when you open a new command window. For this specific part, we will actually look at all four types of commands, as what you see at the top of the window will be slightly different. When you create a new command here, when you click on the Custom Commands section, you'll know you're on there because it is grayed out, you'll get a window that'll pop up that'll have some information for you to create a command. This is the Chat Command window, and you'll notice that there's a set of text boxes and selectors here at the top. These are specific to a chat command. First, you can specify what the name of your command is. This is just an easy name to refer to what the command is, not necessarily how you initiate the command. For example, we'll just call our command name test command. The next is a dropdown that's associated with who is the minimum person of a role that can run your command. For example, if I have this set to followers, that means only people that are following my channel or higher up on the permissions list can run this command. For example, if I have it set to mod, that means only mods can run it, regardless of whether they are a follower or not. You have a currency cost you can specify for a command. This is only enabled and, ac and actually able to be set if you have currency enabled. Then you have the commands that you need to specify when you want someone to run this. You can associate multiple text commands with a given command when running it. For example, if I just type in the word test, that means when in chat, if I type explanation point test, this command will be run. I can also specify other versions of this, like I could say, for example, super command. That means if I type explanation point test or explanation point super command, this command will run. You can specify any sort of commands you would like that can consist of letters and numbers only with a space separated between every single one you'd like. And you're allowed to specify as many different unique versions of this command as you would like. Finally, the cooldown is the number of seconds in which this command can be run before the next person can run it. So for example, if I have this set to 10, when someone runs this command, everyone else must wait at least 10 seconds again before this command can be run. If there is a cooldown set, the user will be alerted with a whisper stating that the cooldown is still in progress before they can run it again. You may leave this blank or may put in zero to default it to no cooldown. Next, let's look at the interactive commands. In order to create an interactive command, you must have a game selected in order to have a command associated with it. Start by selecting a game, and then look through the buttons and joysticks you have selected. To select a command for that, simply click the edit button next to it. Here you will notice that there is the setup is slightly different for interactive commands. First, you must specify how the command is initiated when the button is interacted with. For the basic cases you have on mouse down, on mouse up, on key up, and on key down. By default, this is pre-selected to mouse down as that is the most common scenario most people use. Next, you must specify the spark cost. In this case, it will cost 50 sparks to use this button. Next, you have specified the cooldown for that button. There are two different types, individual and group. Individual allows you to simply specify the number of seconds that you would like that button to be cooled down for and does not affect any other buttons. 
The group cooldown allows you to specify a group of buttons under which if any one button under that group is actually initiated, all other buttons as well are cooled down by the same amount. For example, I have two cooldown groups already defined, big buttons and small buttons. The small buttons group has a cooldown of 60 seconds, otherwise known as one minute. If I put a group of buttons under here, that means all buttons under the small buttons group will all be cooled down to 60 seconds when any one of those buttons is clicked. Next, we have event commands. Event commands are a lot simpler than chat commands and interactive commands. Simply look at each of the events and determine which one you would like to do something special with. Then, click the edit button that is there next to that command. You will notice that at the top, these both text boxes are grayed out. There's nothing special you need to do with this. This is simply letting you know that you are working with the channeled resubscribed event, and will show your channel ID here in the upper right hand corner. Finally, we have the timer command. Timer commands, once again, are just as simple as the event command. To start a new timer command, simply click the new command button and specify a name for the timer for easy reference. Now that we've gone through all the four different types of commands in more detail, let's now just create a basic command and start going through the different types of actions you can do. For this example, we'll create a basic chat command to get off the ground and running. First, let's get started filling out the command details that are specific to a chat command. We'll call this command test command for right now, and we'll allow all users to run this. We'll also set a currency cost of one unit of currency in order to run this. We'll then set the following chat commands themselves that can be run within chat, such as test, command, and test command. Meaning if I use either of these three with an exclamation point in front of it, this command will be run. Finally, we'll set a cooldown of five seconds on it. Next, let's add some actions to our command. Actions you can kind of think of as like recipe steps. They're things that you need to do within a command itself, and you can add as many or as little as you want to in whatever order you would like. To get started, simply click on the drop down at the bottom and select which action type you would like to use, and then click the plus button to add that action to the command. We'll get started with the first most basic one, a chat action. Chat actions allow you to send a message within chat. Fairly basic and simple. You have two options when sending a message. You can whisper the message to the user that ran the command itself, and you can force the message to be sent as your streamer account. This only matters if you have a bot mixer account added to your Mix It Up installation. To send a message, simply type in the message you would like to say to the person. You additionally can also use what are called special identifiers as part of your message. We'll be covering these in a separate tutorial, but you can look these up by simply clicking the link that is over here. Next, we'll add a counter action. Counter actions are simply a way to keep track of a number for something. Commonly, you'll see this used in streams for keeping track of a death counter or an attempts counter, maybe something that has happened a certain number of times within chat. It's up to you how you might want to use this. For a counter action to work, you must simply specify a name for that counter. So you can use any letters or numbers you would like, no dollar signs or any other punctuation points in front of it. So we're just gonna call this counter test. To use this, simply use the dollar sign in front of it wherever you would like to. We'll cover this a little more in detail when we get to special identifiers in a later video. Finally, you must specify how much this should be incremented by when that counter is actually used. So for example, every time this command is one, run, if I want the action counter to be incremented by one, I just put the number one here. That means every time this command is run, the test counter will be increased by one. You can use any number you would like, positive or negative. Next, we'll add a currency action. Currency actions simply allow you to add or subtract currency from a user. Note that this is different than the currency cost that is associated with chat commands. This cost is automatically deducted for you when a command is run. So you do not need to add a currency action in addition to the currency cost to remove currency from a user when something is run. To use this, simply specify the amount of currency you would like added or subtracted from the user. We'll say 5 for example. And then specify a message that you would like sent to that user or whispered to that user on behalf of them.
The external program action allows you to specify a program or file to run or execute when this command is run. This is a fairly advanced action that shouldn't be used without any specific sort of purpose. To use it, simply either type in the file path or click the browse button to navigate to the file or executable you would like to run. In the next text box, you can pass any additional arguments you would like passed into that program when it is run. Once again, this is a fairly advanced end user action that really should only be used under specific circumstances. Game queue actions allow you to do things that interact with the game queue for your mix it up installation. In order to use a game queue action, you must make sure the game queue is enabled. To do this, navigate to the game queue area and make sure you have the game queue enable button toggled. When you run a game queue action, there's a few different options you can choose such as the user who ran this command being added into the queue, getting the user's queue position displayed for them, displaying the entire queue status of how many people are in there and the top 10 people in the queue, removing the user from the queue who ran this command, and removing the first user in the queue itself. You can use these combinations of actions to maintain your queue fairly easily without having to navigate into your window or allowing your moderators to handle your queue for you. Next, we have the input action. Input actions allow you to set, specify a emulated mouse or keyboard input that is processed into your game or the currently selected window you have focused. Simply select from the dropdown the input that you would like to be run for you. Next, we have the interactive action. Although interactive actions are primarily focused on using interactive controls, you can use these from any other sort of command beyond just interactive commands. The interactive action allows you to either add a user to a specific group in your interactive scene, or move a group to a specific scene. You can use this in a way to transition users from seeing one set of buttons or controls within your interactive game to another set of button or controls. Typically, the flow would be to add a user to a group that you have specified, and then when you decide to, move that entire group to a new scene that you're seeing. If you have already defined a scene with a group associated with it, when you add a user to that group, that user will automatically transition to that scene. We'll cover this more in our advanced tutorial about interactivity. Next, we have the OBS Studio action. The OBS Studio action allows you to interact with your installation of OBS Studio to perform various things within it, such as changing a scene, changing the visibility of a source, updating the text of a source that is a GDI text value, and updating the web browser link of a web browser source. We'll be covering these actions more in detail in our OBS Studio and XSplit connectivity tutorial. Next, we have the overlay action. The overlay action allows you to use the specialized mix it up overlay as part of your streaming software. This allows you to, spe to specify text, images, and other fun actions within your stream itself. In order to do this, you will have to have the mix it up overlay enabled and have the overlay web page added to your streaming installation. We'll be covering this in a separate tutorial about the overlay. Next, we have the rank action. The rank action, like the currency action, allows you to add or subtract rank points from the user that ran this command. Just like with the currency action, you simply specify the amount of rank points you would like added or subtracted from the user, and then specify any message you would like to be sent to the user who ran this command. Next, we have the sound action. Sound actions allow you to simply play a sound file on your computer at whatever volume you would like to specify. Simply paste in the sound file path or click the browse button to navigate to the sound file and then specify the volume from 1 to 100 that you'd like the sound file to be played at. This sound file to be note will be played over your default output on your computer. That means you need to ensure that OBS Studio is listening to that output in order for the sound file to be actually played through your stream. Next, we have the text-to-speech action. The text-to-speech action uses your default Windows text-to-speech voice to say a specific amount of text over your audio output. To do this, specify the volume at which you would wish the voice to be set at, the rate of speech at which the voice is set at, and the actual message that you would like set out. 
Once again, like the sound action, you need to ensure that the way the audio output is set will be correctly configured to be audio output through your streaming software. Next, we have the wait action. The wait action sounds exactly as it sounds. It will wait a specific amount of seconds before proceeding on to the next action. Typical actions in a command are run one after the other. Whenever the action is done with its work, we'll move on to the next. That does not mean when the action is done performing all of its work. For example, a sound action will complete when the sound action has been played, not when it has been finished. So for example, if you would like to wait for a specific amount of seconds for a sound action to complete, you must add the sound action and then add a wait action afterwards to wait however long you would like before the next action is run. Wait is a very commonly used action if you have specific setups or visual or audio elements you would like to play to create a great experience for your users. Finally, we have the exploit action. The exploit action, like the OBS Studio action, allows you to perform specific operations on your exploit installation while it is running. You can do the same things you can do with your OBS Studio actions, such as changing scenes, changing the visibility of a source, changing the text data of a text source, and changing the web browser link of a web browser source. We'll be covering this in more detail in our later tutorials on OBS Studio and exploit connectivity. Now that we've gone through all the different types of actions, let's actually make a command fully end-to-end -end with a few actions. Let's start by adding a chat action. For this chat action, we're just going to print out something to the user so that they can know that they ran this command. We're going to say, hello, at dollar sign user, how are you? Now, dollar sign user, you're probably wondering what that might be. That is a special identifier, and you can look at this up by clicking on the special identifiers reference. We'll cover these in a later tutorial, but for right now, trust me on the fact that dollar sign user will be replaced with the username of the person that ran this command. For example, if I, the user, SaviorXTanrin, ran this command, then dollar sign user would get replaced with SaviorXTanrin. The at symbol in front of it ensures that I am tagged as with Mixer Chat works. So for example, when in Mixer Chat you type at and then the name of the user, that user is alerted in chat that they have been messaged. Next, let's add a sound action so that an interesting sound plays through our stream when this command is run. Let's add the sound action, browse, and navigate to the sound file we would like to play. And let's put it at 100 volume to make sure that we can hear it all the way through. Next, let's add a wait action. Since this sound file plays, we want to wait until it's all the way done before we do our next thing. I happen to know that this sound file takes a little bit over 4 seconds. So I'm going to put 4.5 in here to wait four and a half seconds for it to complete. Finally, let's add one more chat action in here. Since we just played a scary sound to completion, let's whisper the user that ran this command and ask them if they got scared. Now that we've done all of our actions, we can save this command out completely and then actually give it a try. Let's start by scrolling all the way down to where our command is that we just added. Note you'll see that it says test command for the name. The actual commands that can be run are test command, and if we expand, test command. And then we can see that the permission to run this command is user. If we want to edit this command further, we can simply click the edit button right next to it here. If we want to delete the command completely, we can click the trash icon. If we want to just temporarily disable this command from running, we can hit this toggle button here to disable it from other people from using it. The command doesn't go away, it just simply won't be run anymore. To test out the command without having to have Mixer set up and running, we can simply click this play button right here to run it. To see the full effects of our command, let's switch over here so that we can actually see what a Mixer window would look like when this command is run. As we said, we can run this command by hitting the play button here, or by simply typing the command in chat. To start off first, let's just hit the play button and see what happens. Notice how after the command is run, we see the first chat message that was sent saying, Hello, at SaviorXTanrin, how are you? The sound played, we waited 4.5 seconds for the sound to complete, and then we whispered back to myself, the user, Hey, did I scare you? Now, let's actually see what happens when we type the command here in chat. Since we have multiple different commands we can type, such as test, command, and test command, 
let's just use command since that's in the middle here easily enough. So in chat, if I type exclamation point command and hit enter, you'll see that the same effect happened when we hit the play button. But now any user could run it. Let's go back and tweak our command a little bit just to see some of the other effects we can have on commands. Let's go in to edit our command and remove the second chat message, the wait, and the sound that's played. So now we're simply left with the first chat message. Let's save this out and then attempt to run the command in chat and see what happens. We're going to run it once and then quickly enter the command in a second time before the 5 second cooldown is completed to ensure that the command doesn't actually second run. Notice how when I ran it the second time, we got a whisper to us saying, this command is currently on cooldown. Please wait another two seconds. This is the effect that the end user would see if they are attempting to spam a command or if somebody just simply ran the command too quickly after the previous time that it was ran. With that, we're going to close out this tutorial that we covered both commands and actions. Hopefully you've gotten a chance to see some of the great things that you can do with MixUp and some of the advanced things that are waiting for you if you take the time to look into them. Thank you very much for listening, and we hope to see you in future tutorials down the line.